BYU Arizona. Next. home game in the Bob Stoops era has been a sellout and tonight is no different as Oklahoma opens up their 112th season of college football. Tonight from Norman, Oklahoma, TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz kicks off now. First game of our doubleheader tonight in Norman under drizzle, cloudy skies. It's UAB taking on the Sooners of Oklahoma. Hello again, everybody, along with Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to college football here on TBS. Let's get right to Oklahoma. After spring practice, everybody was talking about a possible national championship for the Sooners, and their quarterback, Rhett Bomar, gets dismissed from the team, and everybody starts writing him off a bit premature. But if it would have happened in the spring, would it be an issue now? No, it would not, because we wouldn't be discussing it in the terms that we are. And the good thing is that Oklahoma has a guy who is experienced at the quarterback position. Paul Thompson is coming back from the wide receiver spot to take over this team, a well-respected leader, and he doesn't have to be a superstar, just a game manager, because the superstar dots the eye for Oklahoma, the best running back in the country. Adrian Peterson, he will carry the ball early and often, 30 to 35 times if he has his way, and if he touches it that often, Oklahoma will be in business, not only in the Big 12, but nationally. Well, of course, UAB has their hands full, especially tonight because their best defensive player, defensive end Larry McSwain, has been suspended for the game for violating team rules. And then on the other side of the football, Watson Brown for three years has been a pass first, run second kind of guy. Flip flops this year, but he's doing it with an unsettled quarterback situation. Yes, that's because Daryl Hackney has gone on to the NFL. Ten, nearly 10,000 yards passing, 71 touchdowns. So he's got to go to guys who use their legs first. He has four good tailbacks, but these quarterbacks will split time. Chris Williams, who has started before, Sam Hunt, a transfer. The guy who plays best early will finish the ball game, and they must run the ball effectively to have a chance to beat Oklahoma tonight. That's tough at home because Oklahoma's 41-2 and two in the Bob Stoops era here in Norman. But, of course, one of those losses came last year against TCU in the home opener. A fresh start for Paul Thompson and the fresh start for the newest member of our broadcast team our host throughout the season history of college football combined the side speed and quickness of Adrian Peterson at strength and agility he is unsurpassed his workouts include leaping atop a 42 inch box while holding an 80 pound dumbbell in each hand OU's director of sports enhancement Jerry Schmidt says he accomplishes things he did not think were humanly possible you know the saying more powerful than a locomotive faster than a speeding bullet able to leap tall buildings in a single bound look on the ground look in the end zone it's Adrian Peterson or it could be you, Sakes. <laughs> you notice he didn't try to lift anything. Well, uh, UAB won the toss, and they decided to defer, which kind of surprised us because they want to control the clock, but Oklahoma's going to get it. Swayze Waters will kick it off. Joaquin Iglesias, Reggie Smith back for the Sooners. Expecting a little bit of drizzle tonight. Looks like it stopped momentarily. Big surprise to defer the kickoff and give Oklahoma the ball first. If I'm UAB. And we are underway in the opening game of the 2006 season, and it is a short kick. Reggie Smith, the talented youngster, heads out to the outside, gets over the 20, up to about the 22 yard line. Now the Oklahoma offense, very balanced last year, only one yard separated passing and running, but they had fewest yards since 1999. Of course, the quarterback we talked about, Paul Thompson, six foot four, 214. Charles, he runs a 4-5. This guy is no slouch. He's ultra talented, and when he came to Oklahoma, many thought he would win the quarterback position as a youngster. Well respected, an old head on a young body. Peterson alone in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the left of the Sooners. Joe John Finley, the tight end in motion. Peterson picks up a quick six as he scampers over the right side. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Red Lobster, the offensive line for the Sooners. Four sophomores, the old man of the group, 
Chris Messner, left tackle. He's a co-captain, the only returning starter. And, of course, we saw Adrian Peterson run the ball, but when they throw it, look for Malcolm Kelly. He is a solid receiver. He led the team in receptions last season. Pickup of seven on the play. Second and three now for Oklahoma. This time, breaking through is Orlandis King, the linebacker. And let's take a look at our Red Lobster lineups again. The UAB defense, six starters return. With McSwain out, Jermaine McElveen will be back from two years of injuries. He's going to have to anchor that line. Linebackers, Orlandis King, preseason all-conference USA, and in the secondary where the question marks are, they do have a big play guy, and that comes in the form of Kevin Sanders. First passing down of the game for Paul Thompson and put him in shotgun to begin. Loss of three on the carry by Peterson. Three wide receiver set. Thompson has the tie. Quick look in. He's got the first down and two to spare. Ball's loose. But the Sooners have it up at the 35-yard line. Like the call by Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator. He wants to make easy throws for Paul Thompson early. Nice route by Fred Strong. Gets inside, drives towards the football, secures the catch, and gets upfield for the first down. First and 10 from the 35 for the Sooners. UAB shows five on the line. Thompson quick two-step drop, throws it in the flat, back to Strong, and he is right at another first down. The sophomore out of Austin, Texas, Stephen F. Austin High School, pick up at 11. The way they've come out throwing the football is twofold positive for Oklahoma. Number one, short drops, quick passes. It helps the offensive line. You don't have to hold the block very long. It helps Paul Thompson. He gets rid of the ball quickly. Short distances, easy completions. Second first down for the Sooners on their opening drive. Peterson. Penalty flag gets thrown. He picks up about one on the play. Orlandis King, the senior out of Layton, Alabama, and also out of Northeast Mississippi Community College on the stop. And the Sooners had problems with penalties last year. Had almost 72 yards a game for Bob Stoops. Uncharacteristic 72 yards a game for a Bob Stoops team. Holding on the offense, number 72. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. Let's take a look at tonight's orbits fast and easy keys to the game. First of all, the Sooners. In Paul, we trust the quarterback, a well-respected team leader, AP all day. Adrian Peterson running the football all day. Set the rules on defense. If you're Oklahoma, you can't let UAB's offense run the ball and dictate to them. First down and 20. Matt Clapp, Adrian Peterson in the eye formation. Peterson again. Looking for some running room. Able to pick up about two or three on the play. Let's take a look at the keys for UAB. Well, for them, it's reverse offense to begin. We talked about that at the top. Going from being a throwing team to a running team. Beat the clock. They want to shorten the game, get it to the fourth quarter. And introducing Jermaine McElveen, number 98, and Kevin Bam Sanders, number 21. Two players that they need on defense to create big plays and stop Oklahoma. Of course, his Sooner offense, new offensive coordinator Kevin Wilson as Chuck Long made his way to the West Coast, San Diego State. Thompson's third pass of the game has a man open, overthrown, intended for Joaquin Iglesias, the sophomore out of Colleen, Texas. One thing we talked to the coaches about, Charles, is that when Charles Thompson gets going, he can be good, but he does have a touch of being a bit streaky. Well, part of that is to be expected. Remember, he took snaps at the quarterback position all of last year, even after he moved to wide receiver. But in the spring, he became a wide receiver full-time. As he told all of us, I'm all in at receiver. He didn't become a quarterback full-time again till the start of fall camp. So let's give him an opportunity to get settled in and make some throws. Third down at 18. This was the Achilles heel of this UAB defense last year. Opponents 45% conversion rate. Thompson into the flat, off the hands of Adrian Peterson, who said he wanted to have about 500 yards receiving this year. Didn't get that one, and the Sooners are going to be forced to kick it away. Terrific opening sequence for UAB on defense. Once they got Oklahoma in the long yardage, they were able to make them throw it short. And that gave them an opportunity, even if Adrian Peterson makes the catch, to come up with a number of white shirts around him and probably make the tackle and force the punt. 
exactly what Larry Christoph felt the defensive coordinator was looking for from his Blazers. New snapper, new punter for Oklahoma. Michael Cohen, a junior college transfer. Sanders backs up to the 14. Good coverage by Oklahoma. He is corralled as a penalty flag is thrown. Maybe face mask. 48 yards on the kick. Let's see what the penalty is going to be. going to be against the Blazers. I know you're surprised to get our first legal block yeah. on a kick play of the season. <laughs> yeah, really. On the return, number six, block in the back, half the distance to the goal, first down. Carnell Williams, a backup defensive back, right to the right of your screen. Looked to me like he was just right behind him. Yeah. I'm not sure that was enough for the penalty, but it was called. Well, Chris Williams, the senior, gets the first start. They'll use two tonight. He's a backup for three years. He's only thrown 93 passes so far in his career. His first start in his career was at Georgia, so he knows about this type of atmosphere. And the Oklahoma defense is stout as they stack up Dan Burks. Once again, our Red Lobster starting lineups. Let's take a look at that UAB starting lineup on the line. Four starters are back. Julius Wilson, three-year starter at right tackles, the bell cow. They're going to be using three running backs, all different styles. We just saw one of them. Corey White will also see some action. He is the power runner of the three. And look at how short UAB sets up with their huddle to the line of scrimmage. Almost the old Sam Weish when he was with the Bengals, the attack huddle. Ready to turn, snap the ball at a moment's notice. There's some movement. Penalty flag is thrown. And it's going to go against UAB again. So Watson Brown, who took this team into Division One, this is his 12th season. Of course, he's the brother Dead of Mac Brown. Full start, number 64 on the offense. As Tommy Keyes, this is his first time as a true starter. He won the job in the spring, beating out Quentin Harris. So he's probably got to get a little settled, too. You know how excited UAB must be. And this is not an easy assignment, starting what they call backed up inside their 10-yard line to begin. Second down and 14. Ball sitting right on the three-yard line. This Oklahoma defensive front might be the best in college football. Three running backs in the backfield. They pick up two on the play. As we take a look at our Red Lobster Oklahoma defense starting lineup. Finished 13th in the nation in defense last year. I'll tell you, this guy is good. C.J. Iu. He was the Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year. He's anchoring that defensive end spot. The linebacker, how about Mr. Nasty? Rufus Alexander could be OU's fifth Butkus trophy to go in their trophy case. And a secondary much improved. Keep an eye on Reggie Smith, their best cornerback. We'll also see him at wide receiver and also returning kicks tonight. Third down and 11 from the six. I think they run the ball here, Ron. You don't want to turn it over big early in the ball game. Burks breaks over the 15. He'll be close to the first down. Looks like he'll be a body yard short. Burks, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Good call by Watson Brown. Not because it gained the amount of yardage that it did, but because it got them out of the shadow of their end zone, and they'll be able to pump the ball away with no turnover by the offense. You don't want to have Oklahoma capitalize on a big play to start the ball game. Now standing on about the one-yard line, UAB is going to have to kick it away with Parker Mullins. Reggie Smith standing back on his own 47-yard line for the Sooners. Good snap, very little pressure, and Smith will have a chance to return this line drive. Gets away from the first wave, look out. Gets away from the second, still on his feet. Crosses the 50 down to the 47-yard line, 41 yards on the kick, 10 on the return. 49 left in the opening quarter from Norman, Oklahoma, and we are scoreless. BYU Arizona coming in the second game of our doubleheader, but right now it's number five Oklahoma taking on the Blazers of UAB along with Craig Sager and Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. 
Two tight ends now for the Sooners with Joe John Finley and Brody Eldridge. And again, Adrian Peterson in the backfield. Great field position for the Sooners. A little play action. Thompson has a man caught down to the 20-yard line. It's Joe John Finley. You talked about during the commercial, Charles, this is a time for Thompson, Paul Thompson, to be comfortable. We saw, we saw it right there. Great field position with a threat like Adrian Peterson in the backfield. Play action becomes very vital and important for Oklahoma. It's set up perfectly because you figure 28 is going to touch it. Play action, get Paul Thompson out of the pocket on the move where he's effective. And Joe John Finley wide open down the middle. A nice striking connection for Paul Thompson. 25 yards on the reception. 22 was his best last year. He'll try it again. Right down the middle. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Joe John Finley with his first touchdown of the year. And Paul Thompson with a touchdown pass. will be on to try the extra point. 37 of 38 last year. That was his only miss in his career as the Oklahoma kicker. And he splits the uprights again. Sooners didn't need a whole lot. The second possession of the game. A couple of plays, 46 yards. They lead it 7-0. Joe John Finley out of Arlington, Texas. His dad was a coach. Started a little bit last year. The former high school quarterback gets the touchdown reception, giving Oklahoma the 7 0 lead. And what we saw there, too, on the touchdown, Charles, a couple things. Number one, we saw the patience of, of Paul Thompson, obviously. But number two, I think Rick Ristifel, the defensive coordinator for Watson Brown, said, listen, we need to get our linebackers involved in pass coverage. They weren't involved in there, and that was part of the problem. Yeah, probably because number 28's in the backfield. They cheated up, took a couple false steps. And once they came up, Joe John Finley was going by them too late to retake, too late to get back into coverage. Thompson hits him perfectly. Oklahoma's up seven zip. Elliott and Drinker back for Watson Browns, UAB Blazers. And Garrett Hartley will kick it away for the Sooners. Kind of kicking in just a little bit of a breeze. Breeze coming from your left to right. This is going to be about seven yards deep in the end zone. Let's take a look at that touchdown again, Charles. Okay, Joe John Finley's a tight end here. But watch the linebackers here. They move forward. That allows Finley to get into the seam and the safety vacates. Then Paul Thompson has an easy throw. See how they came forward, cheated up? Safety has middle third coverage. And one of the things you're taught is to make sure that you secure where the, the best threat is first before you run to that middle section. The free safety out of the way. That allowed Joe John Finley a wide open path towards the end zone. And Nick Harris has checked in a strong safety for the Sooners. Dan Burks will be the running back. Along with Corey White. From the shotgun, they'll use a lot of formations tonight. It is White. Left side, nothing doing. Let's check in with Mark Fine, a little Tennessee update. Mark? Well, yeah, we were told our job here to keep Charles happy. So with that in mind, Eric Ainge to Robert Meacham. Ainge, two touchdown passes in the first half. This the first possession of the second half. Bit of a surprise here. Already 28 to nothing, Tennessee, guys. And, of course, we'll have California next week at home. Strawberry Canyon hosting Minnesota right here on TBS, 7 o'clock Eastern time. You know, I like that Mark Fine guy. <laughs> <laughs> you just got tired of Ernie giving you grief every you week. Know, right? I had to wear a hat because of Ernie. That's that right. Georgia Bulldogs. I like Mark Mark Fine. like him a lot. They'll try from the shotgun again. Second and ten movement. Speaking of Ernie Johnson, our prayers are best for our man, Ernie Johnson, as he continues his treatments, his chemo treatments. Ernie, you've been in our prayers. We miss you, brother. Get healthy quickly. Yes, Ernie. We're thinking about you big time, my man. Now, you notice Chris Williams is back in. That ball, false start, number 78 on the offense, five-yard penalty, 
Still second down. Ron, at the top of the show, we said that UAB will use two quarterbacks, Chris Williams and Sam Hunt. Our guess was that Sam Hunt would get the second series of the game, but because UAB started backed up on the first series, I don't think they felt like Chris Williams had a fair shot at it. Ran him back out here for a second series. Would not be surprised to see Sam Hunt get the third series, though, so they can get his feet wet and then start to decide who will quarterback the rest of the game. Well, it's second down at 15. Sooner showing blitz again. This time they back off. Williams up to the 20 yard line. One of the keys for the offense when you talk to Pat Sullivan and also to Watson Brown of UAB, they've got to get comfortable early, they said, but the big thing, they can't beat themselves. They've got three penalties already. Yeah, part of it, you know, when you do that, obviously it puts you behind the chains, down in distance, limit your play calling, especially with quarterbacks who don't have much game experience. What UAB needs is field position in order to run the football and then take some shots downfield to try and loosen up Oklahoma. Right now, they don't have that luxury. That was a quarterback run play all the way on second down. Let's see what they come back with here. Willie Edwards on the near side, Drinker on the far side. White and Burks in the backfield. On third and 10, up nope, another penalty flag is thrown. <laughs> I think it may be delay of game. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat, third down. And UAB had a running play on on third and 10. Now they're backed up deeper. Watson Brown, there he is. He's also the play caller. He has a team that's a little jumpy right now. I would be very surprised if the ball's in the air on this third and 15 play. I think he wants to try and settle them down and get out of here without any real danger happening on the offensive end. This time, Corey White, the only man in the backfield. High snap. Williams out of the flat. Sooners converge. White able to get it up over the 20 up to the 22 yard line. Pick up of about seven on the play. Well short of the first down and again they'll have to kick it away. Darren, Darian Williams on the stop for the Sooners. It wasn't a running play as I surmised. It was a pass. But that was as close to a run as you can get by putting the ball in the air. Very safe throw, quick swing. The ball wasn't in the quarterback's hands more than, what, a second? And he got rid of it out to the flat. And they were hoping just to get a little field position to pump the ball away. Mission accomplished. Parker Mullins will kick it away. Good snap. Nice high kick's going to back up Smith. All the way back to the 24-yard line. Penalty flag thrown already. He's got some running room, and it may be for not. Crosses midfield out of the 46-yard line, but the penalty flag is down at the 31. Yeah, it'll come back, Ron. Lindy Holmes, number 11, clipped early in the play. Block in the back. See right here. Keep an eye. See right there. Oops. He's trying to pull off, Oops. but he bumped him. And if they're going to call UAB for the penalty earlier on the same type of a play, you had to throw a flag there against Oklahoma. He was trying to pull off, but he ran into him. Block in the back, number 11 on the return. 10 yard penalty for the spot. First down, TV timeout. We'll take a timeout on the 21 yard line. The Sooners will have it. They lead the ball game by a touchdown. Only one night left. Don't miss a stunning back-to-back -back season finale event. Two shows, two unbelievable endings. TNT Monday starting at 9. The closer followed by Saved. The Oklahoma Sooners with a 7-0 lead. Bob Stoops. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Napa. After the penalty, ball's on the 21-yard line. We may see a healthy dose of Adrian Peterson now. He may have gotten a yard on the play. One of the keys for this UAB team, Charles, I would think, is, okay, you may not be successful offensively, but at least change the field position. They did that because of the penalty, obviously. Yes. But what does this do for Oklahoma then? Well, what it does now is Oklahoma now is a little bit backed up as UAB has been on their first two possessions. 
So you would think now you get a steady diet of number 28, Adrian Peterson. But now the front line, the young, inexperienced offensive line for Oklahoma. John Cooper in the middle, Brandon Walker, George Duke Robinson, Brandon Braxton, Chris Messner. They've got to get down and get some push against the UAB defensive line who's played well early. Strong with Glacius and Kelly to the right. Thompson tucks it and runs. Gets up to about the 29, maybe the 30-yard line before Mistaki Smith brings him down, the senior out of Mobile, Alabama, LaFleur High School. He's on the Butkus watch list. Hey, Ron, when you're an All-American, you can't just run the ball. Look to the left of your screen right there. Is yeah, that a block that by is. Adrian Peterson? And an effective block, and he stayed after it and put the UAB guy down on his back. We talked to him on Friday, and what did he tell us? I told the guys this year, I came to block. And he took out a couple of his own teammates in a scrimmage. He's very proud of that fact. Excellent block. Sprang Paul Thompson on that play. Yeah, he went on and on about it yesterday with us. This time AP gets it. Gets up over the 35. First down, Oklahoma. Well, this UAB defense is quick. They have a lot of starters returning in six of them. But one of the things they wanted to do was take advantage of the team speed and experience. And Rick Christopher, who was the defensive coordinator earlier back in like 2001, he wanted to simplify things a little bit so players can just play, he said. Cloudy mind equals slow legs. Guys have to think too much. They can't flow and play. He wanted to make it simple. Know your assignments. Now go to the football and make a play. and tries to play action again, throws it out of the flat. Good-looking pass caught by Fred Strong, his third reception. He'll be about two yards short of the first down. A lot of people were questioning Paul Thompson's arm strength, especially after last year's game. He had a little zip on that ball. He did. Now watch the route at the top. Fred Strong, all he's doing is going near the first down marker and setting up. I don't think he was the primary guy. I think inside, Joaquin Iglesias was the primary guy. He got knocked off of his route. So he, Paul Thompson went to the secondary guy. But already we're seeing the evolution of the offense with Paul Thompson, him getting outside the pocket and making throws. Clapping Peterson in the eye formation. Thompson, whoop, throws it complete up to the 50 to the 47-yard line of Joe John Finley again. What a throw by Paul Thompson. How he got that off. Joe Henderson was on the stop or was actually putting the pressure on him. How he got that off, Charles. And listen to the roar from the crowd. Not just because this is a good play, but let's be honest, Ron, how many people wearing Sooner Red came to this game tonight wondering how they were going to see Paul Thompson play? The last time they saw him at quarterback, he really struggled, and they lost a football game. He could not be off to a better start, not just throwing the football, but having command of this offense. Now another first down, and Oklahoma's in UAB territory. Back to the ground. Peterson, he's going to be swarmed over. Good defense by the Blazers. Let's check in with Mark Fine with a little Big Ten action. Oh, yeah, we got to get you guys caught up. Vandy taking on 15 Michigan. Chad Henney to Mario Manningham, 27 yards, 27-7. Michigan wins this one. How about Akron taking on 19 Penn State? Anthony Morelli, the new QB for Joe Pines. He's looking good. Three touchdown passes in the game. They win it 34-16, guys. All right, thank you, Mark. And don't forget, at halftime, you'll have all the scores and highlights coming your way from today's action. Sooners second down and eight balls on the 45 yard line scored on their second possession of this quarter about a minute 25 left to play. Another penalty flag. The referee James Hatfield tonight. You know, one of the things about Bob Stoops we were talking with him yesterday and, and we even talked to him last Good year. Ball. Ball start, number 19 on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. At the Kansas game, he knew things were going badly, but he never lost his cool. He focused. He said, listen, we just need to work on the little things. And he told us yesterday, we knew that we were going to struggle last year. It was going to become very apparent to us. Very young team. Didn't come, didn't work as hard as they need in the offseason. We'll talk more about that later. Reggie Smith is in the slot, comes over from the defensive side of the football, but they go the other way to Iglesias. Down to the 42-yard line. Let's check in with Craig. 
Well, Ron Charles was talking about the evolution of this offense for OU. It's also a change in the philosophy. Under Chuck Long, they very rarely threw the, the tight end. In fact, Joe John Finley's in his third year. He had a career-high three interceptions in a game. He's already got that many here tonight. They talked to Paul Thompson, said, what are you comfortable doing? He said, I'm very comfortable throwing it to Joe John. Kevin Wilson says, I'm very comfortable throwing it to the tight end as well. So we see a major change right here, not only using the tight end, but throwing to him as well. Nice report, Craig. What I liked about it is that Kevin Wilson spent time with his quarterback and asked him, what are you comfortable with? Let's get those types of plays into the game plan. Thompson again, looking, slicing over the middle is Malcolm Kelly. Sophomore out of Longview, Texas. Leading receiver last year. He is one of the sure-handed guys. He was the number one receiver in Texas coming out of high school. You know what's happening now too, Ron? You see the confidence of the other players in Paul Thompson showing itself. That was a nice catch by Malcolm Kelly inside because it wasn't a, a, a sure catch in terms of an easy throw. He went into the middle and made a nice play for his quarterback. Now Thompson's going to run a little option. They're going to corral him back at the 38-yard line. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Pretty good quarter, though, for Paul Thompson. 8 of 10, throwing the football. Drew the touchdown pass to Finley, and the Sooners lead after the first 7-0. to TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. As we get set to start the second quarter, the Oklahoma Sooners lead UAB 7-0. Along with Craig Sager and Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. This will be the 10th play of this Sooner drive, and one of the things they're doing well tonight, they're playing well behind that offensive line, Charles. Yeah, and this is an offensive line that really wants to establish that mindset of running the ball against anyone. They need a little more push against UAB's defensive front. I think UAB's playing them pretty tough right now. Again, the play action. Looking out on the flat, has a man. Ball's dropped in the hands of Malcolm Kelly. Couldn't put it all around. Tough Will catch. Evans on the on the coverage. Would have been a tough catch for Malcolm Kelly. He was running out of real estate, going towards the sideline, and the ball was behind him and low. He was trying to walk the tightrope, stay in bounds, and reach back and catch it. This drive, Thompson, four or five for 33 yards, throwing the football. Third down and 13 for the Sooners. Changing up. Blazers bring four. Thompson's got the time out of the flat, just off the fingertips of Fred Strong. That'll bring up a fourth down for Oklahoma. Do you go field goal? Do you punt it? Or do you go for it here? You're in that, you're in that. That zone where you can do a lot of things, especially with the confidence you have in your defense. So they'll probably punt it deep. He's got the time. He steps into the throw. This one a little, the, first, the last one was behind him. This one out front, I think that's but that's a ball though. that Fred Strong yeah. is going to come back and tell his own quarterback, my bad, I've got to catch that for you. Well, they're gonna go ahead and kick it away, Charles. I like the strategy though. With, your, with your defense, Pin them down, play field position here. You might create a turnover deep. Our second punter for Oklahoma, Mike Null. Little high snap, no problem handling it. Nice spiraling kick heads toward the end zone, and that's where it's going to stop. So a good kick by Mike Null, the sophomore out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Sooners come up empty. UAB, good job defensively. They trail by only seven. UAB yet to pick up a first down, only 24 total yards, but they only trail 7-0. That's your time now to, uh, for our KFC Bowl Poll. We'd like to hear the opinion on this question. Will Oklahoma make a BCS Bowl game this year? All you have to do is text your vote, yes or no, to 88222. That's 88222, and do it now. Now we get our first look at Sam Hunt, the junior out of Cedarton, Georgia, has come in at quarterback. Say his best asset are his legs. Look for a little, little, little bit of quarterback run series here. Yeah. And he's going to keep it. There it is, Charles, up over the 30-yard line. Takes a shot by Reggie Smith as he gets up to about the 32-yard line. That's one thing the coaches kept bringing up. He's fast and well-conditioned, and we saw it there. Quarterback run series. Fakes it inside, reads the flow, and then comes back from on the backside. Nice, nice size quarterback. 6'3", 215. Absorbs a nice hit from Reggie Kelly, number three. 
but he has the frame to withstand it. You don't want to take a lot of those types of hits, but at the same time, they're going to have to because the quarterback run game is in the game plan for That's Watson right. Brown. That's the first first down for the Blazers tonight. It was a good job by Hunt. This time he has it up the middle. Nothing doing. That Sooner defense is stout. Maybe a pickup of about a yard on the play. Corey White couldn't find anything going on. That Sooner defense just stacking up the middle. Led by Demarcus Granger, the redshirt freshman out of Dallas, Texas. There's Brent Venables, quote, defensive coordinator. Yeah, and you know, on the last play, I'd said Reggie Kelly's Reggie Smith, number three yeah. for Oklahoma, wore number one last year, switched to the number he likes. Brent Venables likes him on the corner playing for Oklahoma. We'll see him in a variety of spots tonight. Corner, maybe a little offense as a receiver, and in the kick return game. I think UAB still going to have to come up with somebody in the wide receiver spot to make a play. Hunt keeps it. He's not going anywhere. Maybe picks up a yard as he gets up to the 35-yard line. That Sooner defense again just swarming, led by Zach Latimer right in the middle, the senior out of Denver, Colorado. Well, here's a player that last year the coaches told us, and they said he, they wanted him to have a big year, and he did. Rod, how about that last play he just made? Many people won't see it as a spectacular, spectacular play. But they see it as a routine play. But that was a play made in space. One-on-one -on -one tackle, open field against an elusive quarterback. Terrific job. Third down. Five to snap it. Might have to get a timeout here. We're going to go to third and He's ten. He's not going to do it. Nope. Didn't get it in. I'm not sure. Did the bench get a call in? Uh, no. Looks like they're penalizing him. Inexperience? Yes. Well, now the UAB coaches are out on the field. They're, they're, they're trying no to say they got the it. Yep. They did get it off. Timeout is charged to the offense. Their first charge, timeout. Remember, you can, you can get the timeout from the bench, yep. and they took over for their quarterback. They're going to talk this over with Pat Sullivan of Heisman Trophy winner in 1971. What an outstanding guy. And he's done a good job with this offense. We'll take a break. 7-0 Oklahoma with the lead. 56-year-old Watson Brown in his 12th year. Played quarterback at Vandy. Best remembered for that 14-10 upset over Alabama in 1969. Member of the Tennessee Hall of Fame. And, of course, the older brother of Mac Brown. And I think uh, the, the fun we had talking with Watson last night, he is, he's just like his brother, just as nice as can be. But just their relationship, how special it is, and how highly he talked about Mac. He talked about having total trust. And in this business, you have a lot of friends. And I mean, guys, guys, guys that you can totally trust and talking about your schemes and what you're doing. He has that with his brother, the head coach of Texas. Third down and six for UAB. Hunt may have his first pass for the Blazers. And here it is. Here comes the blitz. They throw it underneath. Pass is complete. First down. Rashad Slaughter, the true freshman out of Adamsville, Alabama, minor high school. The former high school running back. That's a couple of good things. A great read and a great catch. Nice call by Watson Brown. Inside screen, nice safe pass for Sam Hunt's first time throwing the football. Third and long, caught Oklahoma in a blitz situation, and they capitalized. That's the second first down for UAB. White and Burks now in the backfield. They'll go from the shotgun with Hunt. Straight ahead running, right in the middle. Burks, nothing going. Let's check in with Mark Fine in Atlanta. All right, Ron Marshall at number seven, West Virginia. Steve Slayton's a name you're going to hear a lot of this year. 197 yards, two touchdowns, 42 to 10. Your final in this one. How about Northeastern and Virginia Tech? Sean Glennon to Brandon Orr. Virginia Tech led the country in total defense last year. They had the offense going 38 to nothing, the final there, guys. All right, we're seeing UAB trying to grind it out, a little bit mix and run. They're doing exactly what they wanted to do, at least on this drive, and that's eat up some clock. Hunt keeps it, dumps it off. Up over the 35, the 45 down to about the 42-yard line. Jordan Irwin, the tight end, the senior out of 
Vestavia Hills, Alabama. We didn't think he was going to play. He had some ankle problems. Yeah, he got hurt inside like the first day of camp. He stepped on someone's ankle when the inclement weather drove them into the gym. But I like that call there. They got the tight end looking like he's going to block to the right side of your screen. Holds a count. And then he slips out into the flat after the rush goes by him. And he makes a nice move inside for a first Pickup of 11 on the play. Smith was on the tackle. First and 10 from the 42. They go from a semi wishbone. And this looks like the old straight T, doesn't it? Hunt keeps it. They grab him. He slips away, gets down to the 35, and bowls his way down to the 32 yard line. Hunt at 6'3, 215 pounds, used every bit of that. Showed a little bit of strength. His offense is moving. Great leg drive. And the offense has responded to Sam Hunt coming into the ball game. Slips the tackle by Rufus Alexander. No small feat in and of itself. Alexander, the preseason Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. You know, Charles, one of the things we're seeing, too, is this UAB team, they believe they can win. This is their 27th, I think it is, BC, 27th BC, BCS, BCS game. game. And every time they go in, they believe it because it started in Nebraska a few years ago. And Watson Brown says his team comes in, they scratch and claw, and they really believe they can win this game. His philosophy and his take on his team and his program is that they don't give games away against bigger opponents. They make people come and beat them. Take a look at this. Number 17, East Carolina, when Steve Logan was the head coach, they beat them. They beat LSU at LSU. Lost to Georgia by three, beat Mississippi State, lost to Tennessee 17-10, and had a chance with a fourth down pass into the end zone with less than two minutes to go in that ball game. Right now, Sam Hunt, three rushes, 23 yards on this drive. He's run it well, he's thrown it well. Second and short. You know, if you're Watson Brown, this might be the time to gamble a little bit. Fake it inside out of the T formation and try and slip someone deep and try and get a big play on OU. They'll give it to the first man through, and it is Corey White, and he gets the first down as he gets up over the 30-yard line with 10.27 left in the second. Or you just go ahead and hand it inside and get the first down. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. But they're letting that clock go. This is perfect for UAB, exactly what they wanted to do. And you know what they're doing right now? They're testing the patience of the Oklahoma defenders. Good point. They like to get the football. They don't want to be out there, bend and don't break. They want to go make plays. And last year, they felt they were a little over aggressive mm -hmm. trying to make plays to get the ball for the offense. So UAB is challenging that to see if the Oklahoma defenders stay sound in their assignments. Now Willie Edwards goes wide to the right. First down and 10 from the 29. Best possession for the Blazers. High snap. Hunt pulls it down. He's got some space to run. Over the 25 to the 20, and he is pushed out of bounds. They'll mark it at about the 22-yard line, but Hunt he made lemonade out of lemons on that one. How about this, Ron? When you're the son of the head coach, you better make plays when you're in the game. Nice job by Hunt handling staff. Look to the left of your screen. Right there, number eight. That's Stephen Brown, the son of Watson Brown, making a nice block on the perimeter. Four rushes, 31 yards now for Hunt. <laughs> he enjoyed that one. See that little yeah. grin on his face? Well, he's got he's got double the yards of Adrian Peterson. See, if he blocks like that, no one can say that he's only playing because mom told That's dad correct. to play him. <laughs> White, Burks, and Elliott in the backfield. Second man through. Burks. Sakes, what do you have? Well, not only mom, but grandmother. You talked about the close relationship between Mac and Watson Brown. Their mother, Catherine Brown, still lives in Cookville, Tennessee. She was very upset today. She couldn't get the Texas game on her TV. But she called up Watson and said, I'll be watching TBS tonight. I look forward to seeing your game, and I want to see Stevie catch the ball. <laughs> well, Craig, she's seen him block. That's the next thing is for him to catch the ball, and I'd sure hate to be the people who didn't carry that Texas game on TV in Cookville. Because they're going to hear, hear from Mrs. Brown. Now, this is a team that in August did a lot of physical work, just running the ball straight ahead. Yeah, they started that in the spring and carried it over. They're doing it again here. A little straw play to White. Bounces to the outside, down to the 10, and the Sooner defense is being tested. D.J. Wolf on the stop, along with Rufus Alexander. The offensive line's doing a nice job creating seams for the running backs, but watch Corey White 
slip a tackle by the free safety number 41, Darian Williams, and gain additional yardage. If you're a good running back, you take all the help you can get from the big guys, and then you tack on your talent to make a good play a better play. This team was good in the red zone last year, 90% completion. The Watson Browns loving this drive. Hunt keeps it stacked up at the 10 yard line. First hit by Keenan Clayton, the redshirt freshman out of Sulphur Springs, Texas. He is a big, fast guy, and they say he's explosive. Saw a little explosiveness there. Oklahoma this time stacks things up, takes out the fullback, and then Keenan Clayton, the redshirt freshman. His secondary coach, Bobby Jack Wright, <laughs> could not say enough good things yeah. about this young man, about how well he's come along and how strong he's been as a player since spring ball this year. The best line, though, is when he said he's natural East Texas strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> natural East Texas strong. I read, as I read to... in my dictionary, and yeah. then I realized that's not in there. <laughs> but we, we understood exactly what he was talking yeah, about. That's right. Hunt keeps it, has some running room, gets down to the five-yard line before he's stacked up again by Keenan Clayton. That's a first down, though, for the Blazers. Ron, this drive has been terrific. Here, Oklahoma's speed saved the touchdown. See, right there, he thought there was a huge gap. But then he saw all of a sudden all these red shirts closing, and instead of tucking it up inside, he tried to break it back outside because they closed down a gap that looked like a sure path to the end zone. How about a seven-minute drive? This is the seventh play of that drive. Can you say exactly as they brought oh, yeah. it up? If you ask Watson Brown his ideal in the first half, we're watching it. 70 yards rushing already for UAB. Hunt looking in the end zone, looking, lofts it with a prayer tip incomplete. Well, Sigler said, I thought I had it. See, they've been running the ball so successfully, they thought now was the chance to try and play action it. But Keenan Clayton, number 22, stayed right with his assignment. Didn't peek into the backfield on the play action fake. Stayed with the tight end and almost came up with a big play for Oklahoma. But look at Sigler, stayed with the ball himself. Tipped, tipped twice. Stays with and catches it, unfortunately, out of bounds. Nice concentration oh, that's good. by David Sigler, number 35. Only one reception coming into this game. Second down and goal from the five. They'll try the shotgun. The Sooners on a blitz, and they beat it straight up the middle with Corey White. What a drive by the Blazers from UAB and Watson Brown. How about this offensive line? Look at the gap. Right in the middle, number 69, Quinton Harris. Just moved the pile. Big opening for Corey White to hurdle through. And you add on an extra point, and we're, we're tied at seven. 80 yards, just about seven and a half minutes, 15 plays. That is called perfect if you're Watson Brown. Okay. And the extra point is good. So the Oklahoma Sooners, they're talented defense sliced up by UAB and we're not at its seven. Have a drive by UAB. Now let's take a look at the Hyundai drive of the game. I mean, the way they mix things up on this, they only threw three passes in a 15 play drive. One of those to Rashad Slaughter on an inside screen and Sam Hunt's legs and drive. Just terrific, and Corey White with the payoff on a five-yard five yard run. Twelve runs, three passes, five different guys touched the ball on that drive for UAB, either running it or catching it. Smith and Iglesias back for Oklahoma. Joaquin Iglesias from the four. Up over the 20, looks for a block from Smith, gets it, and he takes a pop up at the 33-yard line. That's the kicker. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. Right? Wasn't that Swayze yeah, Waters? Swayze number Waters. 84? That was a tackle. Just as you teach a D-back. All right, everybody wants to talk about kickers not being athletes. Look at that. Front it up, front him up, and ran right through him. That's as good a tackle as you're going to see all night long. Look at this. Bam. Then he hits him in the mouth, too. Yes, I like that. Swayze Waters. 
Oh, man. Now Thompson's going to work. Pass is caught up at the 47-yard line. Jermaine Gresham. Let's see, because UAB's got oh, it. Oh, they lost the ball. They took it away from him, and UAB's got it at the 48-yard line. My goodness. This is Jermaine Gresham, a freshman, true freshman for Ardmore, Oklahoma. He catches it, secures it, but look how they try and work on stripping him. You know that? Hey, look at that great play by Will Evans, but he got help from Brandon Register, number two, trying to strip the football. Great job. They worked together in tandem, held him up, and kept working on digging the ball out, and now UAB has it in business in Oklahoma territory. Rod, attack, attack, attack mm -hmm. with your UAB. Last drive, 15 plays over seven and a half minutes. Now the officials are coming over to the near side, and Bob Stoops is, has the first coach's challenge of the year for us. Now the coach's challenge, they get one a game. They have to take a timeout. If the challenge is upheld, keeps the timeout. Here it is. I like this rule, though, Charles. Yeah, I do, too. The coaches, it's one per game, even if you're successful. So you don't get the challenge and the timeout back. You just get the timeout. If you're out of timeouts, you can't challenge a play and stop it. Let me ask you this, though. That was a play that it, it's tough because was he down, I'm sure, is what he's saying. That's How what can he's you tell that? He's trying to say that the whistle was being blown or should have been should have been blown, that his forward progress was stopped. See, there's Orlando's King number 11. They kind of hold him up and make the play on him. And, but we're I seeing don't think, in slow motion, though. You know? Yeah, we're seeing. It's, it's fast for the referees, but I'll be honest with you, Ron. I don't think this will be overturned. I think UAB is going to have the football. See, Gresham's fighting for yardage, still trying to go. He hasn't hit the ground at all. Orlando's King's underneath. Brandon registers over the top. And, and, over, and right there, number 13, that was Will Evans. He takes the football. Well, if he loses the timeout, he'll still have two left for the remaining 641. But the play on the field is confirmed. First down, UAB. That's a good call. Yeah, they, they, that's a good call, though. They got it right. Yeah, they did. No question. Well, Oklahoma hasn't seen the ball a whole lot here in the second quarter. And the defense, a little bit tired after a 15-play, 80-yard drive, has to go right back on the field. You hear a little bit of the impatience in the crowd right now, trying to spur on their defense. Will they continue to be gap sound? and play the option with their responsibilities, or will they cheat trying to make a big play? Sigler and Burks in the eye, Sooners are cheating up on the line. They give it to Burks. Boy, I tell you, these guys got some powerful legs because he was hit right at the line of scrimmage, still able to get three on the play. We thought we'd see a lot of formations from the Blazers. We're seeing just that. They will. And one of the things Oklahoma was afraid of, Charles, and they told us, they said, we had two game plans. We don't know what they're going to do because they've got a new quarterback. They're going to run the ball instead of pass the ball. They, we think. Yeah, we <laughs> think. They weren't quite sure. And, you know, and they're not going to lose all the remnants of their pass offense. Watson Brown, the former offensive coordinator here at Oklahoma, before he took the UAB job. Inside of six minutes to play in the first half. Hunt keeps it. Pitches, great pitch to the outside, another first down for the Blazers. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Again, Dan Burks, he's getting the workload tonight. And a great job by the quarterback, Hunt, and the running back, Burks, not giving up on the option portion. See how he tucks it away? So everyone thinks he's going to keep it totally, but Dan Burks never gave up, kept the option relationship, so he gave an opportunity for his quarterback to get him the ball if necessary. It's exactly what Sam Hunt did. Nice job. Nice job by UAB's offense. That shades of Dan Burks' sophomore year where he had 880 yards rushing the football, but a lot of injuries since then. First and 10 from the 33. Fumble, ball's loose, and the Sooners have it.
The Sooners will take over, and you can see everybody talking to Burks. Knows he's got to shake it off. Watson Brown disappointed, but the Sooners come up with the pigskin. 5-21 left in the half. They're tied at 7. UAB gave it right back to Oklahoma with 521 left in the half. We're tied at seven. The Sooners will have the football on the 36-yard line. Let's take another look at that, Charles. Was there a Robin on the right here? That's the guy to look for. Darian Williams, number number 41. He kind of hid back there. Burks didn't see him. And then when he came up, helmet on the football, exactly as you're taught, knocks it free. It really wasn't ball security for Dan Burks. He had it secured the way he's taught. But really an excellent tackle by Darian Williams that knocks it free. It's funny because just about five minutes ago we saw Bobby Jack Wright talking to Darian Williams on the sideline, tell him to do something. First and ten from the 36. They keep it on the ground. Peterson's been held in check so far, picks up about three or four. Penalty flag has been thrown. A late penalty flag back at the 50-yard line. <laughs> To listen in, not sure what it is. It was sure thrown a long way away, Charles. It, sure, it, certainly, it certainly was. It came from way downfield. Yeah. There's no foul on the play. It'll be second down. Okay. Well, second down. A couple yards to go. And they need to get to that line. That's our first and ten line brought to you by Napa. We'll call it second down and seven. Peterson, though, has been held in check. We thought he'd have a pretty good night tonight. Only 18 yards rushing so far on seven carries. Give credit to the UAB defensive front seven. They're really not getting knocked Absolutely. off the ball and creating seams for Peterson to run. Now let's see what he does now. He's got the first down. Bounces to the outside. To the 30. Knocked down, finally inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. So much for containing Adrian <laughs> AP. 36 yards on the scamper. That's what makes Pax great. They may not have a crack at it for a long time, but watch this. Toss sweep. Nice block on the corner by number 34, Matt Clapp, the fullback. Downfield, number four, Malcolm Kelly, the wide receiver, and a host of other red shirts. Watch Kelly, number four, on number 23, blocking downfield. And then Peterson's strength barrels right through the tackle. Ball's on the 24-yard line, first and 10. Give it to him again. They grab him by the ankles and wait for the rest of the right jerseys to come on. Orlandis King, the linebacker, came up with the first hit. And the rest of the troops came to help out. The biggest run that we've seen from Adrian Peterson was on a toss sweep where he got to the perimeter. On the runs inside the tackle so far, UAB is doing a nice job holding the point of attack and letting the linebackers flow to the play. But one of the things Adrian Peterson does, sometimes he goes too fast for his own good. You yeah, got to wait for things to set up. Yeah, you mean getting ahead of his yeah. blockers. Yeah. Second and 10 from the 24. Thompson straight back looking over the middle has a man overthrown Malcolm Kelly he was there he was open the pass was high and what sets it up the fake to Peterson plenty of time good pocket formed just a little bit ahead of Malcolm Kelly he beats him inside as Brandon registered number two slips trying to help cover on the play that's one Paul Thompson will see in film and he'll continue to work on it. And it won't be long. I think he'll get his timing down with his receivers. Started out 8 of 10 throwing the football. One out of his last four, however. And the one was a fumble, too. Third down. Screen. Thompson's got time. Again, too high. Picked off at the 12-yard line. UAB with another turnover. Kevin Sanders, we told you he's the big play guy, the sophomore out of Pell City, Alabama. They call him Bam. Thought they, thought they might screen at Adrian Peterson on that play. That ball was thrown too high, and it tips off of Joaquin Iglesias' hands. And Kevin Sanders on the spot, on the tip. So he's in the coverage, and he drives back towards the football. And because he does, he's able to get underneath it and make the catch for a drive-stopping interception to the UAB Blazers. 
And they have 335 to work. And we did have a penalty on the play. It's at the 10 yard line. It's going to be against UAB. Unsportsmanlike, number 21, half the distance to the goal, first down. I think he came up so excited and tossed the ball, I believe, high in the yeah. air. The officials been told to crack down on that type of thing. So now UAB has to start backed up. But how about that if you're Dan Burks, the running yeah. back? Big sigh of relief so far. <laughs> that one didn't cost him, but field position is tough. Well, why this OU offense continues to grow around Paul Thompson. Let's see if the defense can step up and do something. They weren't the last time. UAB's offensive line has played well in the first half, Ron. They really need to dig in and keep, you, keep Oklahoma from penetrating into the backfield here. Hunt keeps it, looks at the running room. Stacked up right at the five-yard line, nothing doing. Corey Bennett on the stop, a sophomore out of Roosevelt High School in San Antonio. Log on to Rivals.com and ask Charles Davis a question. Find S. Charles only on Rivals.com, your online home for college football. And my question is, who played a better Darren, Dick York, or Dick Sargent, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has to be a football question? My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Frankly, I thought Dick Sargent was far superior. Yeah, I think Darren so, too. York. Slam dunk. <laughs> Timeout with 3.06 to play. We're going to keep it right here. It has been a tale of two quarters. The first quarter, Watson Brown's offense could do absolutely nothing. Second quarter, they did exactly what they wanted to do. Their defense, you've got to give them credit. Yes. Brett Venable's defense gashed for a 15-play, seven-and-a-half-minute drive, which tied this thing up. We've got uh, some timeouts. Let's check in with Mark Fine. Mark, what do you have coming up at halftime? Well, when you guys take a little break and get a breath there, here's what we got coming up for you on the singular wireless halftime report. The only game with two ranked teams today, Cal and Tennessee, also Georgia Tech hosting Notre Dame. A lot of talk about that one. And an unbelievable start for the Bulldogs in their game today. All that more coming up at the half, guys. Thanks, Mark. The timeout that Oklahoma just took was to conserve time for their offense. They're trying right. to keep UAB pinned down so they get another shot at it before the half. Now you look back and say to yourself, we took a timeout on the challenge. That's one less that they can use here. But I think good strategy by the Oklahoma coaches. They're going to count on their defense to hold UAB because you figure UAB will try and do what? Tight formations, run the ball, and just try and punt it away and get out of there with no harm done. There you can see the numbers on Thompson. Yeah. As, as the one interception, of course, tonight, too. And that was the TCU game mm -hmm. of last year, last year's season opener against a team that was five and six the year before. What was UAB last year, Ron? Five and six. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 171 yards for Oklahoma, 115 for UAB. That doesn't matter. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. Drinkard in motion. They keep it on the ground. The Sooners able to hold them up after a five-yard game by Dan Burks. He's the most versatile of these running backs. He not only runs, he also blocks. That'll bring up another timeout by the Sooners. That'll be their final timeout. And we're going to go to a third down now for UAB. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Oklahoma, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the University of Oklahoma or the Big 12 Conference. 2.59 to play, third down and five for UAB, tied up at seven. You remember what worked earlier for UAB? Nice little yep. inside screen inside for screen. Shot Slaughter. I would expect a screen or a draw or a safe swing pass here. You know, something that doesn't get Sam Hunt, the quarterback, under a lot of pressure from Oklahoma. Timeout just happened, right? Mm -hmm. I expect Oklahoma to apply that pressure. I think Brent Venables is going to go after him here. I think they are too because, and that's one of the coaches that uh, you would be telling us that uh, he expected Brent just to really come after him strongly. Brent Venable's great story in his own right. Here's a guy that was an undersized linebacker, turned into a JC All-American, then honorable mention Big Eight at, at Kansas State. He's going to be a head coach one of these days. UAB two for four on third down so far. 
Third down and five. Ball sits squarely on the 10 yard line, right hash mark. Really haven't had a wide receiver involved yet for UAB in the past game. It's been tight end or running back. That'll put it up. Throws it out of the flat. Ball's caught up at the 13 yard line. That'll be short of the first down. Dan Bur or David Sigler, I should say, on the reception, but a good job on that defense by the Oklahoma Sooners. Reggie Smith coming up. Terrific job by Oklahoma sniffing out what UAB wanted to do. Again, a safe pass into the flat. Flat. He gets the ball over Demario Pleasant for 51. Nice job by Reggie Smith making the tackle exactly where he caught the ball and forcing a punt. There you can see the numbers on Reggie Smith from last year standing at the 50 yard line. Parker Mullins in his end zone by about a yard and a half, maybe two. That's exactly why OU called the timeouts, Ron. Right. Playing field position here. They should get the ball back in good shape. Two to snap it. And then UAB will call the timeout. They'll have one remaining. Of course, this year on TBS, we're going to bring you 11 games from both the Pac-10 and the Big 12 Conference. Second game of our doubleheader features another Stoops. It's the night of Stoops here on Saturday night. Mike Stoops, the Arizona team will take on BYU. Willie Tuatama saw what he could do last year. I think Mike's got his fingers crossed that that young man picks up where he left off. And they took the red shirt off of him late in the season because they needed better play at the quarterback position. And he jumped in and only engineered a big upset of UCLA. Yeah, of course, uh, Mike Stoops, part of the Stoops coaching tree. Of course, uh, we got Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. Mike down there, younger brother, is also on his staff at Arizona. How about Mark Mangino at Kansas? Just got a contract extension. And Mike Leach down at Texas Tech, who has them challenging the Big 12 South, doing things a little bit different than they're used to doing in West Texas. Oh, yeah. Spreading the field and flinging it around. Chuck Long had his first game the other night. As head coach San Diego State had a loss to UTEP, but you just have a good feeling that he'll turn around that Aztecs program. And congratulations, Mark Mangino, the new contract. Bob says he can't watch his brother's game. Makes him too nervous. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, yeah, we asked him about that. He said, ah, I can't watch that. That's blood. <laughs> well, let's pick it up with 2.07 to play in the half. <laughs> Angling the kick away from Smith. Sooners should get pretty good field position, and they will. Ball's going to hit out of bounds. Mark it at about the 45, maybe 46-yard line. 41 yards on the kick, but it was a good kick because he angled it away from Reggie Smith. He knew how dangerous he was. Yeah, you don't want to give up a big return in that situation. Your defense has played its heart out in the first half. Played awfully well. You're tied at seven with exactly two minutes to go in the half. I think Watson Brown would have taken that if we'd asked him before the game. Give you that situation? Would you, would you, would you, would you take it, Coach? No question. Well, you saw Oklahoma run out because the, the, the clock starts on the ready signal after a change of possession. Thompson over the middle. Pass is caught inside the 35-yard line down to the 33. Joe John Finley again. And watch, Fourth reception. And watch the hustle now for Oklahoma getting set up. The clock, as you said, this year now starts on the ready signal after a first down, not on the snap. So they want to be up there and ready to go as soon as the chains are set. They're getting the play call in quicker. They'll come out of the huddle and start moving. Because right now, they're about to mark it ready to go. Well, they already did. The play clock's running. It's down to 13 already. I'm surprised. I thought the game clock would start here after the first down. Okay, so if he got out of bounds, that'll prevent that from happening. Great drop back, Thompson throws it in the flat, caught again inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line. Malcolm Kelly, second catch of the night. A nice throw from Paul Thompson. Look at the protection, even Adrian Peterson. The protection was so good, Adrian Peterson didn't have any one-two block. And that's good coverage by Will Evans, number 13. But a better catch by number four, Malcolm Kelly, and a nicely thrown ball by Paul Thompson. He got out of bounds also, so they don't have to run to the line of scrimmage. They can huddle. Now the clock will start on the snap. Yep. Well, the play clock, uh, I should say, the, uh, the, the snap it starts. It's not the game clock. Pick up a 14 on that play. Johnson again, being rushed from the backside, throws it right as he's hit. He was leveled on the play. Good pressure put on. It was intended for Joaquin Iglesias. 
Looked like uh, McElveen is the one who came in. Jermaine McElveen really put pressure on Thompson's backside. That'll bring up a second down and 10 from the 17, 139 to play in the first half. The, the way they signal it in is they have the play sheet on the wrist of the quarterback. So they tell you what number to look at on the play sheet. He checks it out, relays it to his teammates, and off they go. Kelly on the near side. Second and 10. Thompson keeps it. Leans forward over the 15, down to about the 13-yard line with 1.30 to play. Orlandis King is fifth tackle of the night. I think it's hard to overestimate how well the front seven for UAB has played Absolutely. in this ballgame defensively. There just aren't that many cracks and gaps for the Oklahoma runners to run through. And then once again, four sophomores starting on that offensive line for Oklahoma. Kevin Wilson says he thinks they're going to come together. Third down and six. They've got seven to snap it. One minute left to play in the half. Thompson sees pressure, throws. Is it caught? Down at the two yard. It might be intercepted. Yes. UAB with their second interception of the night. This is by Chris Felder, the senior out of Willis, Texas. is a drive killer it's a dynamic play by the yeah. defensive back number 23 Chris Felder see where the ball is see, the ball is a little bit behind Joaquin Iglesias which allowed the defensive back who was running at the hip of Iglesias to make a play on the football if he throws it out in front then Iglesias can use his body to shield off the defensive back instead the ball the DB was brought into play by the position of the football well, Thompson now 11 of 19, 147 yards, but he's been picked a couple of times. And with 30 seconds left, he's just going to take a knee right at the one-yard line. OU's out of timeouts. They can't stop it. Great half of football for UAB. Going to go into the locker room tied at seven. I like Watson Brown's strategy. I'm not going to do anything crazy here. Mm -hmm. I'm tied at seven. My kids feel good. We feel great. Let's go to the locker room. 212 yards for Oklahoma, only seven points to show for it. UAB, though, with that big 15-play drive that covered about seven and a half minutes. That tied it up. Well, Coach, your teams have never shied away from challenges. How do you think they're responding here tonight tied 7-7 with OU? This is, this is all we can ask for right now. We just got to hang on. We've The second quarter is what got it for us. We were able to keep the ball long periods of time and get a couple of turnovers. That's our chance to win the game. How important was that interception by Chris Felder to keep them out of the end zone? Well, uh, just two turnovers in a row down here, and we had one going in ourselves. So I felt like turnovers would be a factor in the game. They have the first half. We got to come out not having in the second half. Some people question the idea about giving OU the ball to start the game, but now that it's tied and you get to start the second half, looks like you know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, I know how good that defense is. I'd rather have their offense out there before their defense, so I think I would do it again the same way. All right, thanks a lot. The score, 7-7 at the half. Then when we come back, Mark Vine will have all the highlights from the big house in Atlanta. Welcome back to TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. As we get set to start the second half, we are all tied up, tied up at seven apiece. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Doolin. You look at Oklahoma, first possession, first quarter, they go ahead and they score, take a seven nothing lead. But then in the second, you have UAB come back, tie it up with an impressive seven and a half minute drive. UAB wanted to control the ball. They're plus five as far as time of possession, Charles. Perfect blueprint for Watson Brown and his troops, exactly as they drew it up. But when you look at other stats too, they're also winning the turnover battle two interceptions and a fumble recovery they forced it here and a great job stripping the ball out by will evans and getting possession for uab rushing yards who would have thought with adrian peterson in the backfield for oklahoma that uab would be winning that battle paul thompson has thrown for 143 yards in the first half for oklahoma but two key interceptions have helped keep the sooners out of the end zone 
That's why we're tied up at seven. Bob Stoops, I'm sure, had some choice words to say for his troops at, uh, at halftime. 41-2 and two here at home. One of those losses came to TCU last year in the opening game, and that started him out in a one and two start for the season. He doesn't want that to happen. He told us in July, he said, listen, we cannot have, we don't have time to try to get better as we go along. We got to be good when we start the season. Right now, he's got to be a little disappointed with his offense. But, Charles, you look at Adrian Peterson, six carries in the first quarter, only three in the second. I don't think you, you can have him have nine carries in the first half and expect to win the ball game. That's not what Oklahoma's looking for. But let's give credit to UAB. Absolutely.